Okay, I wanted to take a moment and uh, talk about, uh, you know, Z-scores, getting probabilities, and this and that, uh, and the differences of how to approach that and think about that. So in your appendix, in your textbook, and in most textbooks, statistics textbooks, have this uh, chart in here. And so you could look up a z-score in this chart. So for example, let's say you had a z-score of negative 1.45. So you would go to negative 1.4, you would go to the column for the 5, and then that would give you your probability. And so it says 0.0735. Now these are negative z-scores and see how this is shaded. So that's z-scores to the left of that mark. So what does that really mean? How does this work? Well, a neat tool out there is called GeoGebra. And I'm actually going to, uh, and this is free, so you just go to this website. And uh, I'm gonna go to probability. So here's what's really happening, right? So you can actually slide this and Remember the normal distribution, the entire area under the curve is 100%. So we think of it as percent and not as an amount. And so I could slide this around and I said negative 1.45. So I'll just type that in here, negative 1.45. And you can see there it is. And there's the associated probability, 1.0157. Uh, and what did we have here? We had um, five eight, so a little bit of a you know an accuracy problem here. Um, and that's one of the things we don't like about the table. Um, the table is just a bunch of snapshots. Well, here's one of the problems with the table. What if I had something like one point four five seven? Well, 1.457, um, 1.45, 1.457 would round to 1.46, so I'd have to go here, you know, and so you're rounding and you're moving around. That's just not really as accurate. So the table's there. Um, you can use the table. I just don't like the table. Why use the table? We have technology now to do this stuff for us. Uh, and uh, so this table here shows all the probabilities for a bunch of uh, z-scores on the negative side, right? And so as we go closer and closer to zero, we pick up more and more area. So you can see that here on the table. Uh, the closer and closer these get to zero, our probabilities keep going up and up, right? Now the next page is if you had positive z-scores, uh, and so again you look up here and so you see we're shading more and more area so what this appendix represents is if we could slide this over more and more we pick up more and more area so it's giving you probabilities that go with a bunch of different z-scores right so that's what's going on now here's a problem uh, this table in your book only gives you those it does not give you a between so if you had you know I want to know what's the probability between here and here um, this nice tool does do that for you uh, in fact you can come in here and you can type in a specific amount negative 1.325 and um, point um, 689 maybe I don't know and it gives you an exact uh, probability for the area between. The appendix does not do that, okay? Because there's just too many possibilities to put that into a chart, right? So, you know, this is great. The tables are great. This is how we did it in the old fashioned way because uh, we didn't have all this nice, slick computer software. But let's not use this. Uh, let's just use the software. Now, you can use GeoGebra, um, that's fine with me. Uh, but we do have StatCrunch, and I prefer that you actually use StatCrunch. StatCrunch, excuse me. And these are all under calculator. So every single distribution, all these appendices are in the back of the book. You can do them uh, in StatCrunch. It's Stat Calculators Normal. And there's a the between one. So again, you can go negative 1.589, 0.0757. 
to 1.352 and then it gives you the probability between or you can switch the arrow go left to go right and again put in whatever you want for a z-score whoops So there it is below, there it is above. Again, you can switch to between. So these tables are great, you can use them. Just I just don't recommend it because it's kind of why, because the tables are really a summary of all the possibilities that you could use and get from the stof software. Um, there's also a table in here uh, for binomial probabilities. Uh, that's a distribution we'll use at one point. First of all, you have to have the degrees of freedom, so 2, 3, 4, etc. Uh, and this only goes up to uh, 8 degrees of freedom. Um, or not degrees of freedom, well, we call it degrees of freedom. Or trials, the number of trials. Um, and again, this is your P for a binomial. So again, very limited, but if you come into your stat calculator binomial, you can make N much, much bigger than 8 you know put in a p-value and say what's the probability that I get fewer than you know eight successes given the conditions of a trial a number of 20 trials and a probability of p for a success and it spits it out right so you couldn't do that on this table the table only goes up to eight right so not happening um, this is the t-distribution uh, and so, you know, here's this, you know, it's a little hard to read this chart, but it talks about, you know, one tail, two tail, blah, 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 blah. And again, I mean, you could use it, but if you just go to calculator T, you can put in the degrees of freedom and, uh, and put in what you want. So 18 degrees of freedom, put in a z-score. Or you can jump over here, even put a probability in if you're trying to find a critical value. Uh, or again, you can put in a z-score. And so you can move around, do either or here. You can also do betweeners on this one. And you can do that in all of these. Uh, so there's a t-table, right? But don't use the table, use the calculator. It's more accurate. Uh, is there a yep, chi-square? There's a table for chi-square. But again, calculators, uh, chi-square, same thing, put in your degrees of freedom. You can put in the probability if you're finding critical value associated with an alpha or something, or put in a z-score or actually chi-squared score, etc., etc. Right, so all these tables are in your book. They're in most stats book. There's an F distribution, but again, stat, calculators, F, uh, right there. So we don't really want to use these tables. They're great, they're fine, but stat crunch is more accurate. It's easier to use, I think. Uh, gives you a nice visual with it as well. So uh, there's my little uh, talk about you know these tables and stat crunch and what I think about that. So again, I prefer you use stat crunch. Um, it's you know I I've already said it multiple times, but anyhow. So. There it is. I hope that helped out. Um, and uh, yeah.